Today we're going to be looking at Adobe Encore. Adobe Encore is Adobe's DVD offering and Blu-ray offering program and is usually one of the final steps in a video project. Now we're going to start off with our pre-existing video project which as we can see we have exported out a copy of that video. This is the video that we're going to be making a DVD of. When we have that export file, we are going to launch Encore. Now, we're doing this on a Mac, however, it is exactly the same for usage on PC. When Encore loads, it'll bring up this splash screen asking us if we want to create a new project or open a recent project. We're going to create a brand new project. We're going to give our project a name. And we're going to give it a location to save in. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder called DVD Project. Then I'm going to select that folder. Beneath that we have the project settings. We can either create a DVD or a Blu-ray. DVDs are a standard definition format, so therefore are not HD. Blu-ray is a HD format, however you require Blu-ray players specifically to play them back. Now, we're offering a DVD, and beneath that we have to select the television standard. In the UK, that is PAL. However, we can also select NTSC if that's the standard you're making, for instance, if your DVD is for playback in America. Once we've done that, we simply click OK. And our project is ready to go. The standard Encore interface is made up of six key areas. Like the Premiere interface, the Encore interface is customizable and you can change what options are being shown at what time through tabs and windows. Ensure you're working with the same interface that I'm working with. Go to the window drop down menu, workspace, ensure default is selected, and then go to reset default in the same menu. That will return your interface to the standard default. The six key areas are the project panel. The project panel is where all the elements that will make up your DVD project will be stored and accessed. All the video files, still images, Photoshop files, sound files, all the individual elements will be accessed here. This works in much the same way as the project panel does in Premiere. We have the monitor, which works exactly in the same way as the program or source monitors do in Premiere. It allows us to watch back any of the content either from our project panel or that has been placed within a DVD project, such as a video track or a slideshow. We also have the flowchart. The flowchart allows us to map using a spider diagram a DVD. It lets us see what elements are linked to which elements, as in what menus take us to what videos and what menus a video takes us back to when that video is finished playing. We also have the properties panel. The properties panel changes its contents based on what we have selected at any given time. Is where we get access to all of the attributes that allow us to control our DVD project, such as where a button on a menu takes us to, or what video is actually being played by a video track. And then at the bottom here we have the timeline. The timeline is where we place video clips that are part of our DVD. And it operates in much the same way as the timeline does in Premiere. And finally, we have the slideshow. This is where we create our, any slideshows within our project. A slideshow is a series of still images showing one after the other at a speed and order defined by you when you make the project. Now that we've had a, a brief introduction to the interface, let's import some assets into our project and start offering a DVD.